so pit, oh yeah, hands are crazy. What's cracking, bitches? Welcome into the Chris Wormley Show, brought to you by Hands Are Crazy. Dot com and the Ends of Crazy Podcast. My name is Mike DeCastro. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Dub Sports One. He is at Jordan York Music, and we are coming to you today, unfortunately, on a bit more somber note following the Steelers' loss. But JY, anytime we get a chance to pick the brain of a Pittsburgh Steeler, specifically our good buddy Chris Warmley, it's always a good time, right? Yeah, I mean, Steeler football is back. You know, it was a tough loss on Sunday, but, you know, we knew that the Steelers were going to have to work out the kinks and uh, it's early in the season. So don't panic. I think that, you know, we're going to, we have that extra game too. So I I think we'll get it figured out and get hot at the right time and make a run at the Super Bowl. I'm still keeping the faith. Look at that. Optimistic. Mr. Glass half full over here. I respect it. We're excited today because it's Taco Tuesday. Tell us. Oh yeah. Taco Tuesday. That's a lot better than my rendition, no question about it, because Taco Charlton is now a Pittsburgh Steeler. And if you weren't aware, he was formerly a Michigan Wolverine with our soon-to-be guest, Chris Wormley. So we'll get a chance to talk to him about his relationship with Taco. That's fun to say. It really is. And we'll find out if he thinks a taco is a sandwich and what to expect, of course, from Mr. Charlton as he joins the black and gold moving forward. Obviously, they need him. They've been going through a lot of injuries uh, the defensive line, of course, took uh, a serious, serious beating. Tyson Alulu is hurt. We know about the groin injuries that have sp- are widespread throughout the team uh, currently, and we'll get to all that with Warmly. But, Jordan, I want you to tell everybody about one of our wonderful sponsors, Steel City Wheelhouse, one of the best auto customization shops, probably the best, in Pennsylvania. Seriously, you can find them at SteelCityWheelhouse.com. The work John does is incredible. Tell them a little bit more about what they can offer. Yeah, I mean, they have two locations, one in the Meadowlands and one in Imperial, and they are the best in the Berg um, when it comes to auto detailing, rim, stereos, alignment, whatever you may need. They are the only place to go in Pittsburgh. I know a lot of the athletes go there. I know just anyone who is into the car scene knows about Steel City. And uh, so you should get down there, man. Steel City Wheelhouse. It has two locations. And uh, tell them JY and Yins are crazy sent you. Mike, hey, man, we're in this together, and we're going to make stuff happen, so let's do it. Go. It's where the bar is set. I don't know if you can see it on my T-shirt. They yep. set the bar, of course, and make great apparel. That's certainly relevant because they also have a new apparel store uh, coming shortly, certified hoods, yeah. uh, area code logo. It's going to be really cool stuff. Check it out. Find out more details, stillcitywheelhouse.com. It's a good day to talk about merchandise, JY, because – Tell the people what you're wearing, too. It's finally time to drop some yins or crazy merch for the yeah, people out there. Yeah. Give, give, give us a spin cycle. Can you see the back? Yes, sir. And that is going to be shown off at our tailgate this Sunday. Yeah. Gold Lot A behind Stage AE, the yins are crazy tailgate. We've been waiting freaking years, obviously, now to put yeah. this on. Of course, with the happenings of last year, you couldn't have a tailgate. We're now going to be back, baby. 9 a.m. Gold Lot A with special guest Jeff. Reed, two-time Super Bowl champion and everyone's favorite kicker. <laughs> everyone's favorite kicker, everybody's favorite party boy. He won't even care if I call him that because the guy is a lot of fun. So if you're going to have yeah. a tailgate, you know, y- y- you might as well have some freaking fun. We're going to make up for lost time with Jeff Reed. Come on out. Join myself, Jordan York, Jeff Reed, a bunch of other yinsercrazy.com contributors. It's going to be so much fun this Sunday before Steelers Bengals. It's free to you. You come out and hang out. We're going to have alcohol. We're going to have some merchandise. A lot of good items on the way. All right. Just on the way now, it's number 95 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Chris Wormley brought to you by Yinzer. Crazy.com in the Yinzer Crazy podcast. And none other than Steelers defensive lineman Chris Wormley. Chris, how are you today? I'm good, man. Just uh, just had a burger. We are talking before the show and uh, – little burger and mashed potatoes, but um, fueled up, ready to go for the show and uh, talk a little bit about the, the game last last week, which was, you know, not the outcome we wanted, but uh, I'm excited to talk about the Bengals too. Yeah, the burger looked delicious. You were really rubbing that in our faces over here. We're sitting here starving, <laughs> uh, but we'll eat after the show. Hey, obviously not the outcome you guys wanted uh, on Sunday against the Raiders, but just take us in between the lines. What was it like to just be back out there at Heinz Field in front of the pack crowd? It was great um, making the drive down from my house or from the hotel um, Sunday Sunday morning was was great. 
uh, a little bit of traffic uh, trying to get to the stadium and then park, but it was uh, it was well worth the wait to, to see the to see the injuries out there. We got the terrible yeah. towels, the jerseys were out, people having a good time, drinking, eating. Um, it was cool to, to see that aspect, and then the game was, was great too. Um, got to see Renegade from from the good side uh, for the first time, which was super exciting. Um, yeah, the, the crowd was the crowd was was ready for it, um, but you know we just just didn't pull out the win like like we expected to. Yeah, Chris, tell me a little bit about what the Raiders did to stifle you guys. Uh, obviously, you did an excellent job stopping the run, you and the guys up front, filling some big shoots because you had some injuries that we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, but, but what were they able to do in a nutshell uh, that, that really made things challenging for you guys defensively? Uh, I, think, I think their biggest thing is they just won those situational downs and those situational moments. Um, we had them um, – uh, you know, backed up a couple times uh, on the third yard line by a great punt by, by our punter, uh, Harvin, and, and they got out with, a, you know, a 13-yard pass, like screen pass to the running back that uh, set them up to, to, you know, get out of that backed up situation. Um, they made some big third down plays. We had a lot of penalties um, on both sides of the ball that, that I know that are things that we can, we can clear up that will make, you know, that'll take, you know, 100 yards or so off of their totals. Um, but, yeah, we just, we just didn't – we just didn't execute on those situational downs and those, those weighty plays like Coach Tomlin talks about a lot. Um, that if we did, it'd probably be a different story uh, this Tuesday talking to you guys. Yeah, no question. I, I do want to address a little bit of the um, cool news, I guess, if you will, from today. Jordan, you said it in the intro. What day is today? Uh, it's uh, Taco Tuesday. That a boy. You're exactly right. It is Taco Tuesday, Chris, and you – are now what it seems like going to be joined by a former Michigan teammate. Uh, you guys led a star-studded defensive line for the Wolverines in 2016 and 2015. Taco Charlton was signed to the practice squad today. First, tell me a little bit about your relationship with him. Obviously, you guys go back a little bit. Um, did, did you stay in contact? Have you talked since this unfolded? Yeah, so the, I guess the first time I actually really met Taco was a state championship basketball game my senior year, his junior year. I knew he was coming to Michigan um, like that following uh, that following year. And um, he had Karis LeVert on his team who played at Michigan. Yeah. Uh, now plays uh, for the Nets, I believe, still. Yeah. Uh, we had Nigel Hayes who went to Wisconsin and now plays for Barcelona um, overseas. So we had we had some dudes playing against each other. And um, that was the first time I, uh, you know, played against Taco, met him. And then uh, we were teammates for four years. Um, we came out the same draft class. Um we were bookends my, my last year, and, and we had a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to to get him and get him up to speed, and hopefully he can make that make the jump to the to the 53 man roster and and uh, continue to to play together. It, it, we had a we had a blast those four years together, and um, I'm excited to have him in in the Berg and um, get him caught up to speed and, and have him show what he can do. Who got the best of one another in the hoops game? Taco won 40, 45 to 40. Uh, Close game. All of his points were free throws, I believe. <laughs> I, think I fouled out that game, um, but yeah, his team won. And I wish that we could have we could have got him on the show today, but he was uh, he just got into town this morning and he's you know, trying to figure things out. But um, yeah, I'm excited for him to be here. I'm excited for uh, him to experience Pittsburgh, and um, I'm excited for him to to put the put, to put the helmet on and play some ball for us in the coming weeks. Great stuff, Jay. Well, take it away. Yeah, so obviously, you know, there's a lot of injuries right now on the defense. So specifically, I want to just talk about Tyson with the ankle fracture. Um, obviously, that's a devastating injury. He's a great player. Um, have you been in contact with him? And, you know, just kind of just where where's his head after, you know, that? Yeah, when, when, I, when I, I was on the field when he got hurt and when he was walking off, so it kind of something like he had like a bad ankle sprint. Like he was putting weight on it a little bit. Um but then at halftime, I went and saw him, and it, it didn't look good. And um, they, they didn't have a you know a definitive answer, but they could tell it was more than just you know an ankle sprain or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he you know he had surgery on Monday. Um, obviously, he's not only a great nose tackle run stuffer um, up the middle for us. You know, you saw what he did last year at that position. Um, but he's a leader. I mean, it's, he's, it's his twelfth year. He's played a lot of football, seen a lot of things. And I don't consider myself a young guy anymore, but I still look up to him and go to him for, for advice on, on football and, you know, what he's, how he handles, you know, things with, with his kids and his family. So um, 
him not being around for these next couple of weeks is going to be tough, but um, I know he's going to, he's going to rehab like crazy and, and come back stronger. Yeah. So last week on the show, we talked about your friend TJ Watt and how he went from no reps to just completely dominating in week one. Um, what, what was that, you know, with the groin injury, you know, what is that, like how devastating was that for the defense, you know, not having him on the field? Yeah, I think anytime you take a player like TJ out, even if it's just for that first that, that half, you saw um, the impact that was felt. You know, Melvin got his first sack of the year, which was great. Um, but TJ's, you know, TJ's TJ. And, and when you lose a guy like that, uh, you can kind of feel it a little bit, not even just on the field, but in the sideline and his presence and leadership. Um, you know, we, we want him to be as healthy as possible and hopefully he can come back as soon as possible for us to, to continue to win these games, especially with these division opponents coming up. Speaking of health, we uh, saw some of your interview yesterday. Of course, you're feeling good, right? Uh, no, no groin or anything? No, I mean, it's just, you know, playing a lot of snaps now this year, which is a good thing um, compared to last year. So the body's feeling it a little bit, but it's only sure. week two. So I, uh, we have 15 more weeks of this stuff. So we're excited to – I'm excited to, to continue to play and, and continue to uh, contribute to the team. So um, yeah. the player's going to have to stay healthy and uh, doing everything I can to, to stay healthy for sure. One thing that caught my eye yesterday, Worm, is you're watching the Chris Wormley Show brought to you by YinzerCrazy.com and the Yinzer Crazy Podcast. You talked about how this is a next man up league. You said that over and over again. You talked about your guy, Carlos Davis, in his progress from year one to year two. I think you said something like his get off is absolutely insane. Tell Steeler fans why they should be confident in a guy like Carlos Davis to fill some big shoes moving forward. I mean, he's the, he's the type of player that you want. Um, he kind of reminds me of, of Hargrave a little bit. Uh, I didn't play with him, but I, I watched a lot of tape on him. You know, we played six times against each other those three years that I was in Baltimore. And excuse me, when he was with the Steelers, um, and Carlos has a, is is one of the most athletic people, big big guys I've ever seen when it comes to how he moves and how he can bend. Um, so I'm excited to see him get on the field. He got a bunch of snaps against the Bills. Um, obviously, he didn't play last last week with a with a little bit of a knee injury. So um, you know, hopefully, he can come back sooner than later. When, it, when it's dealing with that. But I'm excited to see him continue to take those steps that I've seen, um, you know, at least in camp and in the preseason. What about Isaiah Lauderville? you got a Wisconsin guy, Big Ten rivalry running strong there for sure. Yeah. Uh, what, what indicates to you that he's ready uh, for some significant reps? I mean, he's a smart kid. You know, you go to Wisconsin, that's a, that's a great school. But just how he handles himself in the building, um, he doesn't complain. He didn't complain when he didn't, when he didn't play the first game. Uh, the first time he gets in his first play against the against the Raiders, he gets a tackle. Um, so I think as me, the, the more reps he gets, the more he's going to be able to uh, learn and grow from each situation and each snap that he's in. And I expect him to continue to to get better as the season goes as well, because he's going to be called upon, um, you know, for, for you know the foreseeable future. So we'll see how he continues to progress. But I have confidence in him that he's going to uh, continue to take those steps needed. Look at you, shelling out compliments to Badgers over there. Did you know, random fun fact for you, the Steelers have more Wisconsin players on their team than any NFL team. But I'm going to have to check out. Michigan's got to be catching up now with at least three, obviously. Four now, yeah. We four, have, yeah. We have four now, so uh, I'll take all the Wolverines we can get. So uh, especially especially when we have some Buckeyes on the team with with Haskins and obviously Cam and yeah. a couple other guys too. Well, but Mark can always come back too. Don't who's forget that. that. I said Lamar Woodley can always come back too, as he stayed in the first episode. So there's always that. I know he has at least one or two reps in him. We'll get him on a third down, uh, third and long, <laughs> and let him rush the pass for like the old times. But yeah, man, as, as many Wolverines we can get on the team, we'll, we'll take. Definitely. So I know the loss wasn't fun, and I know we kind of talked about it earlier. But uh, what was that like? I mean, this that was really your first experience at Heinz Field with the atmosphere like that. Can you just describe, you know? what that's like being a player on the field to, you know, have that behind you? Yeah, I, I can tell you it was a hell of a lot better than being uh, with no fans from last year compared to last yeah. year. And um, just to see the energy, and like I said, driving to the stadium, um, people walking around, you know, the restaurants were filled. When you get into the stadium, people were there, you know, they're there before I am. Uh, when I go out to warm out, they're there, you know, asking for autographs, taking pictures, just excited to be back in Heinz Field. Um, it was, it was a great, great energy. And, and I expect that for the next, you know, seven or eight home games, however many we have left uh, for the season. It, it was, it was great to have the fans back. 
Yeah, so also you had your first renegade experience. I know it didn't work this time, but uh, was it everything that, you know, you dreamed of? Yeah, I mean, I decided to, to get the renegade during a night game too. That, uh, that, that takes it to another level when you when you yeah. it's at night, you know, national TV, the stadium's packed, maybe a, little, maybe a little cold out, a little chilly. You can see the breaths, you know. Um, yeah. So I decided for that. But, yeah, the renegade was great. It was uh, great to be on the good side, like I said earlier. Um, but, yeah, the Renegade always always pumps us up, um, even though, like you said, it didn't work this time. Definitely. Man, what you just described, firing me up. It sounds like classic yeah. I'm ready to run Steelers football, man. Cold weather, put a hoodie on, strap no, it up. No, no doubt. Oh, man, that, it, it'll be here before you know it, that cold weather in Pittsburgh. Yinzers, Yinzers are cool with it until Steelers season is over. Then they're like, get me out of the cold. It kind of sucks. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, get, let's get to spring. <laughs> hey, so, let's transition. Let's get to the Bengals. Uh, yeah. Obviously, this is a first AFC North opponent you guys will be facing this year. Anytime that happens, it's a huge game. Of course, every game's a big game. Let's let's be real. It's the National Football League. I want to play a little word association with you. All right, I'm going to throw out a name. You give me a few thoughts on that player. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Let's start with Joe Burrow. Um, I think he's talented. I think he's really talented. Obviously, you know you saw what he did last year. Those first couple games before he got hurt. Um, I'm sure he's looking for, looking to uh, only build on that. And, you know, he's got the talent, you know, first overall pick, um, Heisman winner. So definitely got the talent. Joe Mixon. Tough tackle. Um, I've played him now a handful of times too. And he's always, always, it usually takes more than one person to bring him down. Um, and I think he's, uh, he's probably the best player on that offense for sure. All right. I got a sneaky one for you. Mm-hmm. Mike Hilton. Ah. That's See what I did there. Yeah, I mean, he's <laughs> what, what the role that he played, at least what he played on on the Steelers last year. I don't think too many people can do that. Um, so I'll say special. Okay, I like I like that a lot. I, I think that's a it's a good place to end that. Chris, what, what's it going to take for you guys to get this done? Obviously, a, a lot. You know, it's early in the season. You're going to have a lot of moving parts, uh, regardless, right? Guys are rotating in and out, but. This is a Bengals team that's obviously going to come in very hungry. They're coming off a loss as well to Chicago. You guys got a 1, 1 p.m. start time on Sunday. What is the key, at least for you individually, uh, on Sunday? Me is, is to make plays. Um, there were a few times where I got through the line, had a chance to, to tackle the running back, and I missed that. And um, I've watched it on film a bunch over these last couple of days, and uh, it, 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 it eats away at me when, it, when you see those plays that you could have had. And they weren't plays that – you know, broke for 30 yards or went for touchdowns. But those, you know, if you don't nip that in the butt sooner or later, it's going to it's gonna cost you something bigger than, than what it did. Um, so for me, it's just making those plays and finishing those plays. Um, but I guess as a defense, uh, you know, as a whole, um, those situational plays, elim- eliminating those situational plays where they make, you know, more plays than we do, um, try and be penalty free as much as possible. And, uh, as a big guy, just stop the run. Can we put you down for Big Worm's first sack? You know that Worms like to burrow, right? <laughs> I like that. I like that. I mean, a little, a little corny. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to play against him last year. I was hurt when when uh, we played him when he was healthy, and then he got hurt when I came back healthy. So uh, my first sack this season against the Burrow would be pretty cool. So uh, would be cool. You know the saying, Jordan? Show off that shirt one more time. Uh, early bird yeah. gets the worm. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Uh, Chris, just a few more minutes here on the Chris Warmly Show. I can never leave you anymore because the Michigan demographic has absolutely loved this show so far. We get comments every week from Michigan fans who are like, those last few minutes when you get warm talking Michigan, make it 30 minutes of Michigan football. I'm like, we'll have we to have a separate show. <laughs> I yeah, think. To 10, 10 minutes of the show if we want to talk a little more about Wolverines. I'm always, I'm always all about that. Let's dedicate a few minutes to it right now because the people love it. So let's give them what they want. Cool. 63 to 10, the maize and blue again. Undefeated still. Blake Corum, is it time to start talking Heisman for the guy? I mean, he's running all over everybody in the big house. Ohio State struggling a little bit at home. Are things kind of starting to fall into place for the Wolverines this year? Yeah, I mean, let's not get too excited. And I use not the greatest <laughs> team. Right? Um, but yeah, I was. There, someone put on Twitter, it was the Heisman odds. And Corm wasn't even on there. I'm like, okay, they got you know all these deep, all these players on. I'm like, you can't get you can't get any you know no, no love. What's he need to do? Uh, rush for a 900 yards a game? So I think I think uh, it's time to to start talking Heisman for him. 
Um, but yeah, the, the, the boys are looking good. The defense is, is humming with, with the new defensive coordinator. Um, Aiden Hutchinson, I think, is going to be a lock for a first-round pick. Um, he continues to ball out. His energy is crazy. He runs to the ball. He tackles. He sacks the quarterback. He um, stops the run. So I think he's a for-sure first-round pick, and I'm excited to see him continue to take those steps over the next you know two, two three months. Um, but I'm excited. Obviously, they got to get the passing game uh, going a little more. They did a little bit against NIU, but like I said, it's NIU. Um, in two weeks, I think they play uh, Wisconsin, and that's going to be a big test in Camp Randall and Madison. Um, that'll be their first true test, and uh, I'm excited for them. We'll, uh, TJ and I will have a little, maybe a little side bet going on for that. Um, and I know we go to Green Bay too, so hopefully we can catch some of that game before, either before or after we, we take off or land um, in Green Bay. So I'm excited yeah, for the Marines, and they look good. Can't forget about Joe Schobert either there, another uh, Wisconsin Badger that's going to be right behind you. Uh, in, the, in the defensive levels. Uh, that's, that's all great stuff. Can't look ahead past Rutgers, though. They're playing good football. This is one of those games this weekend where if you're looking ahead to Camp Randall, you look past the Scarlet Knights. Well, that's funny because when, when they were, you know, they were up like 42 nothing or something like that to NIU, and I was like, dang, I don't remember a loss or a win this big. The last time I think Michigan won that big was when I played and we beat Rutgers 79 to nothing. Uh, so, yeah. Can't look past Rutgers, obviously. They had a tough, tough go with them last year um, during the COVID year. So they got some good players, obviously, but um, I'm excited for them to, to face a, you know, a top-tier opponent in Wisconsin in two weeks. Before we get out of here, JY, I just got to know a little bit more about Worm the Hooper, man. What what kind of basketball player were you? Were you like a, ba a back-to-the-basket guy? Yeah, I, I, like I see you as a, like a low-post hook shot guy. Listen, when you got when you have guys like like Nigel Hayes, like I said, that that played at Wisconsin and and now plays in Barcelona, you had some guys that shoot the three, and we had some other uh, football athletes that that uh, were basketball players. My job was to be you know back to the basket, post moves, rebound. I put up like you know eight points a game, but you know ten to fifteen rebounds, and uh, that was my, one of my good buddy Storm Norton, who's the uh, the right tackle for the Chargers. Now we were. That was our main job was to uh, back to the basket, rebound, give the ball to Nigel and, and watch them score, you know, 20, 30 points a game. So I said I did, my job. I did my you're, job. You're humble, man. I'm sure you at least scratched out a double-double. Probably had a 10, 15 average or something like of, of that nature um, going down. <laughs> Maybe I'll show you that. We have a fan question from Twitter. Should we, should we end on Yeah, that? go ahead, J.Y. Hit okay. him with the, hit him with so the fan So obviously, question. you know, every week we ask, you know, Twitter. Um, this is from Fun Time Seven Eight One, and he Ooh, wants this to is, know. This is a tough one. Okay. Yeah, Ben in the offensive line. What's your confidence in them finding it? You play against them every day in practice. Yeah, I mean, shift in notes. Yeah, most. I mean, most of the time we're going up against the, the scout team that's given us the look for the team uh, that we play that week. Um, but I mean, it's, it's Ben Roethlisberger, right? You have to have confidence in him. Uh, without him. Our, our team doesn't go, you know. Um, obviously, the offensive line is young and new, um, and they're going to figure out. It's only week two. We have 15 more games uh, yeah. to, to to figure this stuff out. And it, it damn sure isn't my job to to, to critique an offensive line and, and a two-time, you know, Hall, future Hall of Fame Super Bowl winning quarterback at Ben Roethlisberger. So um, yeah. I have confidence in them. Obviously, uh, we, they would have liked to run the ball a little better. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to have confidence in a guy like Roethlisberger and uh, the offensive line. Yeah. You know what I have confidence in Ben doing, JY? is shooting the jack. Have you seen Ben play basketball? There's an Ohio guy, too, from Finland who, who can put up buckets. You ever see the video of him and Shaq? It is, it is yeah, awesome. I do like remember that. I just ben. watched that recently, actually. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm the big Ben fan. Ben, I support him through everything, man. And when Big Ben's gone one day, Pittsburgh is going to know what they had in a quarterback because people don't know how good they have it. Absolutely. And he, when you have a hall, first ballot Hall of Famer like him, man, you got to appreciate it. And, and I, I stand with Ben through thick and thin, man. So the, the Pittsburgh needs to wake up. We're spoiled as fans. You know, imagine being a Browns fan. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, careful, careful. <laughs> Quarterback and Baker, but uh, I'll take Roethlisberger any day, baby, yeah. Yeah. Hey, we got a Hall of Fame worthy show here in the Chris Wormley show. Chris, thank you so much, man, for your time once more. Like I said, one of these days, pickup game. We're we're, we're going to get you on, on the court. You root for the Cavs, by the way. Are you Cavs? Are you a fan? No, I, I grew up. Yeah, a, I grew up a Pistons fan. Oh. 
and I was a Shaq fan growing up too because he was a big guy, you know. Um, yeah. I followed him wherever he went. But Pistons fan, uh, first and foremost. Chauncey Billups, Ben Wallace, all that. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Rip Hamilton team. I mean, that was a, that was a yeah. take on Prince. Man. I like it, man. The short sleeves. Come on, no, that's a great, that's a great team. Chris, always fun, man. As always, stay healthy, man. We're excited to watch you in person again this weekend. Uh, best of luck. Go out there. Hopefully, get a sack, get a W, and we'll talk to you next Tuesday. All right, thanks, fellas. So am I, number one sports site in the Berg, let me show you why. The latest stories in unbeatable podcast with your favorite